Are you ready to get started in the nitty gritty of trace minerals? Today in this video, we'll be looking at our iron, manganese, uh, copper, and zinc. So again, all of these are essential plant nutrients, which, which means the plant cannot live without um, these nutrients. It cannot you know, produce any yield, it simply cannot live. And so it's very important that we have uh, these nutrients regardless of how much is required. If you don't know who I am, I'm Till Simmons. I run this channel, Agriculture Explained. I do this for free so that I can help you with your education around agriculture. So, you know, you can get better marks, improve your farm, or even help with your veggie garden. Again, I do this for free. So the only ask I have of you is if you can subscribe so that you can see future things that I can help you into the future with agriculture. And the second thing I ask of you is if you can share with someone uh, and we can spread this um, education around. If you can do that, I'll be very thankful. Awesome, all right, let's get into it. So iron, iron, um, it's probably the, the most used trace nutrient we have. It's used in 0.01% of our plant's dry weight. So if you dry out all the water, that's what you have left. We have 0.01% iron. So compare that to our 45% uh, carbon or our 1.5% nitrogen, it's tiny. We don't need much, but it serves a very important function. So in terms of how the plant absorbs this, iron is a metal, and so it typically metals have a lot of oxidation states, which means the amount of electrons there are on the atom changes, and there's a very wide range that this can happen in. And this happens with all our um, metals, and only some of these oxidation states can be absorbed by our plant. So iron, for example, it can be absorbed in both the, the three plus and two plus form, Preferably the, the two plus, because that's the actual form that's used in our plant. The plant can absorb and store our three plus uh, iron, but it has to then convert that into the two plus. So what does this mean for growers? Simply, if you're uh, applying a foliar, and most of the time you wanna be applying these as foliars, because once it hits the soil, it'll oxidize, um, and you won't be able to absorb it, so it's a waste of money. So we wanna be applying in our two plus, and if we want to increase the um, absorption of our nutrients, we want to reduce, have a, re uh, a reducing environment within our soil. Now, iron, uh, now our soils are abundant with iron, so there's no problem in the actual amount of iron uh, in our soils. The problem is when it, the iron doesn't become soluble and our plants can't absorb it. And so this can be due to a range of reasons. It can be uh, biological, so when our microbes aren't functioning, it can be pH driven, it could be redox driven, like there's a whole range of different reasons why this might be the case. But if it is the case, you know, improving biological uh, activity in our soil uh, is probably the, the best thing we can do long term, otherwise applying a foliar spray uh, fixes it in the short term. Anyways, onto the function. The main function of iron is the synthesis of chlorophyll. Now, if you remember from some other videos, chlorophyll is used in photosynthesis. Therefore, when we don't have iron, our plants don't photosynthesize the best they can. And so when they don't have iron, they can't synthesize chlorophyll and the plant can't photosynthesize, which means it's very important, like super important that we have iron so that the plants can then photosynthesize. Photosynthesis is ultimately the, the way that plants produce their own food. And so if we don't have this engine going, the plant's not gonna be able to produce its own food. And so it can't produce, grow and, and make us money. The other function in iron is that it's a component of a lot of uh, vital enzymes. Now you'll find with a lot of these trace minerals, that they have a very uh, major role in activating um, enzymes or being a component of enzymes. Now, enzymes are like these little um, machines in our plants, machines in our plants and, and um, even our own bodies and animal body, bodies, and they just perform little functions. And so they can you know, bring together molecules or they can pull molecules apart. Um, there's a whole range of different things that they can do and there's thousands and thousands of enzymes. So I'm not, I won't go into all of them because there's probably you know, thousands and with different enzymes that it affects and you know things that we don't even know that it affects it probably affects so when we think about it chlorophyll synthesis of chlorophyll um that's the that's the major um function manganese manganese comes up in a very very small amount 0.005 percent of our plants dry weight again it's in the reduced state so uh, manganese can exist in uh, a plus three and a plus four 
uh, stage in our soil or um, phase in our soil, but it's only in the plus two stage that's actually available for our plants. So manganese has a really important role in photosynthesis where water is split. And so that's called water hydrolysis. So if we go over to this diagram over here, we have basically water. It passes through a uh, manganese protein and that splits our water in half and allows um, the individual bits to be used in photosynthesis. Actually, if we go back up to iron for a second, um, this is my attempt to somehow make a diagram. A lot of enzymes use iron, ions in it. If we don't have iron, we don't get these enzymes. Super, super simple. The other function of manganese is that it's a uh, activator for a lot of enzymes. So if we don't have manganese, these enzymes won't be activated, so they won't be able to be used. Um, typically, it's not a component of enzymes like iron, but it is required for these enzymes to be um, activated. The final part is in plant defense. So all of these uh, enzymes are used in what's called a superoxidant um, or SOD. And so there's different forms. Uh, manganese is used in, a, uh, in, in one type um, that is important for plant defense against pathogens. So it can um, defend off you know, uh, fungus and bacteria and, and uh, viruses, as well as uh, helping the plant um, reduce stress loads from uh, free radicals. And so what happens, and I'll talk about it in a bit, but it, it makes sure there's a balance between electrons uh, in, our, in our plants and it can exchange electrons with our free radicals, which cause damage in our plants. But it's very important for plant defense and making sure we have enough uh, manganese in our plants ensures that our plants are going to be able to fight off a lot of disease um, and stress. Next is copper. Um, similar, actually used to a lesser extent than manganese, 0.000. 6% um, of our plant uh, dry weight material. That's a very small, you don't need much, but it's very, very important to our plants functioning. Uh, again, like iron, it has uh, two forms that it can be absorbed in. Uh, the uh, copper two plus is the most efficient um, and directly used. It can also um, absorb the uh, copper plus. It's used in plant, uh, uh, plant defense. Again, against um, pathogens, so fungal pa uh, pathogens mostly, um, as well as others, as well as um, scavenging free, not, uh, free radicals out of our plants. The other, probably more important, I wouldn't say more important, but more actionable thing that uh, copper has uh, that it can do is in the function of seed and pollen production. So when we have low uh, amounts of copper, we get poor seed production, and we also get poor uh, pollen and pollination of our flowers. And so simply the, the plant becomes less fertile, and when that happens, we're gonna have less fruit, we're gonna have you know, less grain, less reproductive yield. So that's not good at all. Finally, we have zinc. Zinc, uh, again, like everything else, very small amount, 0.02%. It's uh, absorbed in one um, uh, phase, the zinc two plus. And zinc has probably the, mo the biggest role in activating enzymes out of everything. It activates over 300 uh, different enzymes. Uh, massive, massive role in that. Now these enzymes range from functions from photosynthesis to protein synthesis to respiration to you know, DNA um, synthesis. There's a whole you know, range of different things that these uh, enzymes do. And so it's very hard to pinpoint, you know, zinc does this or zinc does that. It does a whole range of different things. So when we're deficient, it affects the whole plant. Like it, it's not good at all. Again, zinc has a very important function in uh, defense. And both zinc and copper form this zinc copper sod. So the super um, oxidant. The way this works, and we don't, probably don't need to know too much about it, but it's probably you know, cool to see. Effectively what it does is it takes these spare electrons in in free radicals so these are kind of stress um, molecules in our plants it takes the electron and then it gives it to something uh, to something else effectively so here we have um, an oxygen free radical uh, so the extra oxygen it's going to take that extra oxygen that's uh, sorry the extra electron spit out just oxygen it's going to take this electron and then it's going to call uh, cause for the copper two plus to turn into copper just plus. 
Now that's a stable, that's like stable uh, ways to hold these electrons. Uh, and then as a way to kind of discharge this uh, electron, it's going to give it to basically another um, free radical, but with some hydrogen and it's going to turn into H2O2. And so this way, basically we can get rid of two free radicals out of our, out of our plant, which is causing damage, um, and turn it into something that's less harmful. So this is a way that the plant can um, protect itself from stress. And all stress is um, basically oxidative stress, which is these free radicals roaming around in our plant. Cool, well, that's probably a lot to um, take in in a, in a short video, but um, in essence, very important that we understand the function of these nutrients and how we can do, uh, what we can do to, in our farms to make sure that these nutrients um, are sufficient in our plant. And most of the time with these, it's, uh, it is foliar sprays. Otherwise, we can work to improve our biologicals uh, in our soil. Awesome, well, that's about it. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to share with someone that you think would benefit a lot from this. We have a few other videos coming about about new, uh, plant nutrition. So make sure to subscribe so that you can see these in your feed. Awesome. Thanks for watching. My name's Till. Cheers.